This is Dakota News Now, your first alert station. This is a nationwide crisis that we see people who are committing crimes using our tribal areas as safe havens to proliferate a lot of their drugs and their trafficking, their raping of women and children, and their selling of human beings and perpetuating violence against them. Governor Null making a rare appearance to South Dakota media, speaking on issues involving the southern border and how she says it relates to South Dakota. And good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Allen, Governor Noem holding her first news conference in months after traveling south to Texas and going to the southern border. In it, she again raised her concerns about cartel activity in South Dakota and what she is calling pushback from tribal leaders. Cooper Seamer was there. He begins our first alert team coverage tonight at 6 from Pier. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem once again going to the U.S.-Mexico border and once again coming back telling the federal government and tribes to do more to crack down on cartel activity in the state. That the drug cartels and their affiliates and their criminal activity have made all of our communities unsafe. Governor Noem is back in South Dakota after visiting 20 deployed South Dakota National Guard members in Texas who have been helping construct barriers on the southern border. Noem says an action from the federal government has allowed cartels and dangerous drugs to enter the country in greater numbers. If we cannot stop the flow of drugs and the movement of this uh, activity on federal lands that are under federal jurisdiction, something is very wrong with our current system. Noam again referenced a group called the Ghost Dancers, an alleged affiliation with the Banditos and Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. She says tribal leaders have let their guard down and allowed cartels to establish roots on their lands. During the press conference, Tribal Relations Department Secretary David Flute read off comments allegedly from indigenous people of multiple reservations frustrated with their own tribal leadership. Uh, I know that many people uh, said that I shouldn't have said the name of the gang, but I did not name the gang. They named themselves, they wear the patches proudly. It is a matter of fact in investigations. Take it from the hundreds of calls, emails, and text messages that our administration has received from folks on tribal reservations asking the governor and supporting the governor's work. Newly appointed tribal law enforcement liaison Algin Young says the state is reaching out to offer mutual aid agreements to tribes. This would allow the state to coordinate with those governments and provide funding and more officers across the state. I have testified in front of the United States Senate Committee on Indian Affairs about the drug crimes that impact our reservations. Noam once again said all of this has turned South Dakota into what she calls a border state, saying that every day the threat to residents here increases. And so we will step up and we will continue to protect and do our role to protect the people of South Dakota and make sure that they are as safe as possible. Those failed border policies of President Biden have turned South Dakota into a border state and we've seen the effects here every single day with the crime and the violence. And speaking directly to South Dakota's tribes, Noam questioned the ban on her, but then also questioned why tribes weren't doing more to limit cartel activity on their own lands. In Pierre, Cooper Seamer, Dakota News Now. Now, a few hours after the governor's conference, the South Dakota Attorney General's Office and the Department of Justice sent out a joint news release. The statement begins saying, quote, the vast majority of methamphetamine and fentanyl found in South Dakota originates from our southern border. The cartels are actively engaged in moving these illicit drugs across the southern border, which then find their way into our South Dakota communities.